Hey everybody, Muriel Joe here. On this project, I want to show you how I paint a beach wave using oil paint. And I've really simplified this down to what I think are the most important elements that make that look of a beach wave. And so I use these same things in my more complex paintings, just with more added detail and greater care to the accuracy of things. It's just more of the same thing in the bigger paintings. But if you can follow along on this video and experience the success of making a wave look like a wave, then I'm confident that that will help you with your more complex projects as well. So I hope you enjoy following along. Let's get started. Okay, now the first thing I wanna do is just get some white on my canvas because I'm gonna be using a lot of light colors down here and it's much easier to add dark to my white than it is to lighten my dark colors. This is an old tube of Grumbacher Thalo Blue. And I know that I'm gonna put a wave up in here and that I'm gonna use a lot of blue in it. So I'm just gonna put my blue right on that area. And then let's put some black on there. A little bit of black goes a long way. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just scoop out a little off the top of that tube. Again, that's Windsor and Newton. Okay, and then I'm just going to start making these oval shapes as good as I can. You know, it's okay if they're not perfect. As I get higher in the picture, I want to make them flatter, flatter shapes. So when I get up here, I want to be really making flat shapes. Down here, they can be more rounded. And I'm going to try to go back over areas that I did and share the color a little so that I have kind of a uniform color. I don't want it to be too extremely dark. I want to make sure I squeeze them closer together also. I don't want to have the white space left in between to be just as fat as the white space left in between these. So I really, you know, if I want this to, to look like it's getting further and further away, I really want to close in that white space and just leave little skinny areas of it. Now I'll get some of this black and blue mix and I'm just gonna just on this top edge of each of these blue areas or I, I could say right underneath each of the white areas I'm just gonna make a little shadow okay now I'm just making the shape of my wave this is my bright color where the light is really really shining through this wave you know, wherever it's crashing over, I'll come down lower. The white water that might be tumbling over, I could put some right here. Okay, now what I think would be cool here is to grab some of this dark shadow color down here. And I'm just going to put it all along the top of this for a shadow. There, see that little bit of green makes a nice nice tropical color to this wave. It's just a natural effect of the blue water filtering the red light out before it filters the green light out. Now I think I want to see what I can do about getting rid of this big blob of blue. Let's put that on the edge of the canvas over here. Alright, and I'll just you know, put a bright strip right here. And I'll try to keep it above the dark, the dark area because that white will quickly pick up those, those dark colors and not be so white anymore. Now if you really want that turquoise color of the wave to stand out, then it's probably good not to make the sky with the exact same turquoise blue. That phthalo blue has a beautiful turquoise hue to it. Alright, I'm using just such a little bit that I'm just going to scrape it right off there. Okay, that's not a little bit. There, and it's already pretty well smeared across the canvas, so I just, I just using the brush to even it out. Okay, so let's bring this down, but not all the way. I'm going to leave some white water on top of this wave, so I'll outline the top of this wave. You know, and you can leave some streaks in this. It kind of looks like a ocean mist. I don't have to blend it out perfectly. All right, now here it's, it's coming over, so I'm going to make a straighter 
line here where I'm going to put the top of the wave curl in. The top of this wave, I've really loaded it up with white paint. So I'll go across now and kind of blend it into the sky a little bit so that it looks like the mist coming off the top of that wave. There might not be as much white water, you know, on thinner areas of this that aren't tumbling over real extremely. So I'll take the blue and maybe a little bit of the green and I'll just try to blend it down to that bottom edge where that white is. And what happens with, with water is that underside of the water where it's curling over, well, it's, it's the underside of the water that reflects the most light up through everything else. So it's, you know, kind of a strange phenomenon that happens. It's a really cool thing about this water, but in areas where there's not a whole lot of bubbles, you'll see that effect more. So the reason I'm explaining that is so you can understand why I'm leaving this white strip on the underside of this and then coloring the higher areas. Hard to do anything soft when there's this much paint on the canvas. See now this heavier area, there might be more white water in here, so I won't do as much right there. It's tumbling over more right there. So right here might be a dark area that's showing you what is beneath the surface. And so that I'm gonna, that's not filled up with cloudy dirt right there. So that I'm gonna use my, my straight blue, because I want that to be my my deep blue sea that's just barely showing through that wave. And I'm gonna start making a shadow under where I want the where I want the front edge of this white water to be. So the foam's kind of rolling in right here. I'll put put it here. Now I'll use that other blue. This blue is more violet. You see that difference right there? So I use both of them in the sky and I want this to be real similar to the to the sky color. Then I'll do the same thing down here. I'll pull some of that dark color right into here. This is gonna look kind of brown next to all this blue, even though it's just a black and white mix. The, the black has a brown hue to it compared to the rest of this. So now I can make little waves in here. And I'll make a wave, I'll wipe off the blue you know, so there's these two ways to approach painting waves. You can paint the reflection over the top, or you can paint the face of the wave. One is painting the colors that are being reflected off the surface. The other is painting the colors that are coming from underneath the water. I just thinned this titanium white with some linseed oil, and then I'll just make little squiggles across these light colored wave faces. Just make the slightest little bit of some horizontal ones across the blue areas and then bring those bright colors, bring that bright white, it's just pure white. Bring it down across those faces. Now kind of a last step here, I think I will just go over these white spots again to bring them out. Since I started with that white base, it's going to let me kind of go over these white foam areas and redefine those bright white edges. I just kind of lost a lot of them when I was blending it. And I was dragging that big brush across. Learn all about what works and what doesn't, you know? Just go crazy. Put more detail than you should. I was never really about the, uh, the finished painting as much as what I felt like I could come away with. Maybe I'll squeeze that shadow up while I'm at it. It's doing these simple projects that just try to put together the fewest and most fundamental elements of a picture that I find to be the most helpful for me in my learning process, experiencing the success of creating the look that I was after with just those very few things, rather than jumping into more complex projects where there's a lot of variables that are hard to understand what might be causing it to look 
bad or good. So let me encourage you to do more of this and repeat this kind of process and I hope you experience success with your paintings. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.